Uh, the Polar Express number eight. Is it me or did anybody else see that happen? OK, Polar Express back. I think it's, this is the IMAX uh, re-release, you know, blah, 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 blah. Polar Express is interesting from a motion capture point of view. And I went to see it because it's the one in which Tom Hanks takes all the leading roles through the miracle of motion capture technology. I took my kids to see it. It is a good roller coaster ride. It's pretty empty, though. And we don't have the same affection for that story that apparently they do in America. But it is zip, zang, boom, you know, empty-headed fun. A, a little bit scary. Well, exactly. You see, uh, hence the thing, because I'm constantly on the lookout for films which are not in any sense... A little bit scary. ...scary. I have, I have a six-year-old who doesn't want anything that's even slightly scary. Thank you very much. I thought, Polar Express, we've got the book. It's a lovely Christmas book. We do read it every year. Thank you very much. That'll be nice. Hey, presto, Tom Hanks has created a scary character who sits on top of the train to terrify the kids. <laughs> but it's Tom Waits. That's the funny well, thing. what's is the it? point of that, though? Well, because... You don't need a scary person in every film. No, but the book itself clearly wouldn't fill the two hours or the 90 minutes or whatever. Whatever. But also, presumably, the book, which I haven't read, doesn't have the rip-roaring roller coaster sequence in it in quite the same way. I mean, it is, technologically, a miracle. But when it comes to performance capture, as we all know, there's Andy Serkis and then there's everybody is else. Is a miracle in the kind of March of the Penguin sense of a miracle? What, you mean as in the sort of divine miracle? Yeah. No. This text says, why no review of the films of the year like last year? I think that's next week, isn't it? Well, it's not me. It's going to be James. I can do you films of the year very quickly. Well, <clears throat> I mean, clearly, two best films of the year, Crash and uh, History of Violence. A History of Violence, a David Cronenberg film, which deserves to walk off with everything. Worst films of the year, Last Days, you know, Revolver, obviously. 